All right, one more revelation before we get into the mystery of godliness and talk about the doctrine of baptisms. All right, everybody look up here. I want you to see this. This is you. You are a precious jewel in the sight of God. Can you say amen? I'm just, this is just an illustration. And the Bible says in Colossians chapter 3, that if you be risen with Christ, set your mind on things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of the Father. Set your mind on things above and not on things on this earth. Gives us some instruction. And then he says, for you died and your life is hidden in Christ, in God. So I got this little wonderful illustration that'll help your mind get in line for what you have. See, I have everything that God wants me to have, and Satan's trying to talk me out of it, trying to keep me ignorant about it. So let me educate you. Here you are, Jewel. <laughs> and here we have Christ. I know it's just an illustration, but it's for those on the camera too. You are in Christ. So guess what? Satan can't take a pot shot at you unless you stick your head out. But see, you're not just in Christ. It says God on there. But you're in Christ. In God. And sealed. See, this is what Satan is lying to the church. The bag of rocks I talked about last week. The bag of rocks is that we think, oh, this is our life. This is all we Do your favor, yourself a favor and stay in God. Say amen, everybody. Because the only way that anybody can get to you is to get you out of here. And James chapter 1 says, every man is tempted when he's drawn away. Doesn't mean you lose your salvation. By his own lusts and own wants. And that's why God said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So everyone, did you get that? Say, I got it, Pastor Gary. All right. Somebody says, you know, illustrations really help us to understand. All right. The Truth About. We've been doing a series called The Truth About. Today is one of what we call the mysteries of godliness. Everyone say mystery of godliness. The word mystery is a Greek word. It's a translation or transliteration, which means hidden teachings that only certain people can know. For example, we have certain clubs like... You know, the odd pup fellows or maybe eagles, you know. And in order for you to know all the things about that club, you've got to join it, right? And so God has <laughs> mysteries that were hidden in the Old Testament that, are, that weren't revealed to people until Jesus came and rose again. And then gave us the Holy Spirit to teach us these truths and to open up the eyes of our understanding so we can receive revelation of who we are in Christ, what we have in Christ, and the mysteries of godliness that were hidden in the Old Testament to be revealed in the New Testament. Say amen. You know, all these things that uh, sometimes we're studying are all key truths. Linda and I have always committed to give you the truth so that you could act on it and you can have a relationship with God on your own. Amen. And if we were somehow left and moved away, you would be solidly founded in God because of, of the truth that you practice and the one in whom you have a relationship with. Can you say amen? So good morning, church. This is the day the Lord hath made, right? So we're, we're going to be studying about how important it is for us to have our spiritual eyes open and our heart to be like a child so we can relearn some truths. How many know that when you were a parent, maybe you weren't a parent, maybe you were, that your, your teenagers or your, your, your children got to the age was suddenly they just shut their ears. 
Christians, listen, there's a tendency and there's a spirit that works within the body of Christ to try to get Christians to not hear or to assume before they hear. It says it's a fool that will answer a question before he hears the facts. That's what Proverbs says, okay? So basically what I'm going to reveal to you is some mysteries, but I want to give you some visuals so you can actually see what happens. Now here in a couple of weeks, we're going to be baptizing with our new baptism. We're going to have a class, but we want to give you the revelation of who you are in Christ and how these things work. Someone say amen. So Father, give us revelation, knowledge, and insight to your word. Open the eyes of our understanding and help us to see who we are in Christ, in Jesus' name. And everyone said, all right, if you open your Bible, please go with me to Hebrews chapter 6. How many here didn't know there was more than one baptism in the New Testament? It's okay, put your hand up, sorry. There are three, okay? All three are very important. All right, you're in Ephesians, or excuse me, Hebrews chapter 6. Now, we're going to look over what we call the basic principles of the doctrines of Christ. It's listed here in Hebrews 6. Verse 1 through 3. You ready? Therefore, leaving the discussion or the elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works. You guys know what dead works is? It's when you do something for God, but your heart's not in it. Just quit. If you lost your joy in it, wait till you get it back before you serve. God doesn't want Mr. Krabby running around being an usher. <laughs> Moving right along. Dead works. This doesn't have God in it. Okay? Principles of dead works. Then it goes on. Okay? And I, the, I love it. It says, the laying down of the foundation of repentance from dead works and faith towards God. We always approach God in faith. And then two, of the doctrine of baptisms. Do you see the word S, the little S behind baptisms? So there's baptisms, not just baptize. Okay? Say it with me. And a laying on of hands of the resurrection of the dead, of, of these eternal judgment, this we will do if God permits. He says, look, I'd like to teach you a lot more things than these six here. But I just listed it because it says the doctrine of baptism. Now take your Bible and go with me to Ephesians chapter 4. Now, in Ephesians chapter 4, look at verse 3. It says, Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace, there is one body. How many bodies? Those people are running around saying, I belong to this church, or you belong to that church. Just get rid of the whole thing. There's only one church. I have this statement. When you go to heaven, all the signs fall off. And if you go to hell, they all burn off. So listen, there's only one church Hello, oh, only one. So it might have different names in different sections, but it shouldn't divide us up. Can you say amen? God doesn't like division. He doesn't like one against another. He doesn't like black against white and white against black. This is not his design. That's Satan's design. Satan does that to people. They go ahead and buy into it, and then he bleeds them with the energy that they're arguing with each other. Hello. And okay, it says, endeavoring to keep the unity of this spirit in the bond of peace. So let's work on unity. And there is one body and there is one spirit. How many spirit? Just as you were called to one hope of your calling, one heavenly calling. One Lord. How many lords? One faith. How many faiths? One baptism. How many baptisms? Well, here we have one baptism. And over in Hebrews 6, we have baptisms. I'm glad you wonder about that. All right, because what you see in Ephesians 4 is talking about the 
baptism that you need to go to heaven. There are other baptisms that complement that first baptism, being born again. Everyone say born again. Born again. Means Jesus came into my heart and brought the Father and the Holy Spirit, and I have God in me. Okay, so we're going to show you what all that's about here in a minute. And so what you realize and what you need to know is the one baptism here in Ephesians 4 is the one you need to go to heaven. Okay, now here's a funny thing. In the Old Testament, they had seven. Say New Testament, three. Okay, first one you need before anything else. So you need to make peace with God, surrender, and ask God to come into your heart. Can you say amen? Because you can't live your life successfully on your own. Even the richest people in the world. Who was the guy with the airplane and the spruce goose? He had so much money and he did things for the government. Howard Hughes. And at the very end of his life, because he did not know the Lord, his mind with Satan's suggestions made him crazy, and he turned into a germaphobe, living in a hotel, not wanting to talk to anybody. Now, how does that happen when we keep pushing God away? All right, so we need that first baptism. Say amen. All right, so when you get born again, you become a child of God. Different statistics different set of rules. You're not a sinner anymore. You're a child of God. Only because God made you so. All right? All right, let's go on. So number one baptism is the new birth. So let's look at it. I want you to see it written in scripture. So go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We'll look at verse 13 and 14. It's warming up. All right. We're going to baptize in the sun in a little bit. No. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. 1 Corinthians 12, 13 through 14 says, For by one spirit, how many spirits are there? One. one. We're all baptized into one body. You see that? So now we need to know what the word baptize means. Baptize means immersed. It means dunked. It means soaked. It does not mean sprayed or sprinkled. Hello. It means dunked. Now, I'm not coming against anything. If you were like dedicated to the Lord at maybe your church, Catholic, Lutheran, you know, Episcopalian or something, they do sprinkle children and infants and everything, and God accepts those things. But that's more of a baby dedication. Can you say amen? God didn't sprinkle you when you got saved, did he? He filled you. You got a wellspring inside your spirit springing up every time everlasting life. So you can see how the enemy works very hard in keeping us from understanding who we are, and how to walk in the newness of life. We want to walk in the newness of life, in God's life. Can you say amen? You know, when I'm walking with Jesus, I fear no evil, for you are with me. All right, so it goes on further to say, for one by one spirit, we're all baptized, immersed into the body. You see that? When you accept Christ, the spirit puts you into the body. What body? The body of Christ. So you've been put into the body. You didn't decide one day you're going to join. Hello, moving on. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, Greeks, whether we be slaves or free, and all have been, this is where I get that drink in the one spirit that I told you about some year, weeks ago. And have been made all to drink into how many spirits? One spirit. For in fact, the body is not one, but many. 
So when you and I, all of us all over, become born again, we surrender to God, and he becomes our Heavenly Father, then the Holy Spirit takes us, and he puts us in to Christ. Now, God places in the body just as it pleases him. So guess what? He might make you an arm. He might make me an eye. He might make, like my wife, a floating kidney in the body of Christ. <laughs> I'm sorry, dear. No. You see, God selects us to function within the body because he has given us the gifts and the callings to do that very thing. You see, in order for my arm to work, I need the grace to involve all the functionings within my arm. So do you. And all that grace comes from God. Can you say amen? Let's go to another scripture that tells us the same thing, and then we're going to go to an illustration. Amen. The next scripture is Romans chapter 6, starting with verse 3. Or do you not know that as many as us that were baptized, immersed into Christ, Jesus, were baptized in his death? Hello? Didn't Jesus die and rise again? So when you, you might not know this, but when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you go in proxy to, to with Jesus to his cross, to his trial, to his cross, to his death, to his resurrection, and now you're seated with him if you be risen with Christ. Now you're seated with him in heavenly places. Do you, are you getting it? Do you see the lies Satan have been selling the church? My goodness. Well, you know, you just hang out to the end. Now, I'm not trying to be a smart aleck. I'm just trying to say the enemy doesn't want us to know. Because once we find out who we are, we'll trash him and we'll expose him and revival will break out. Because people will see they've been lied to. Yes. Moving right along. Let's go to the third scripture about being born again or being baptized into the body. Galatians chapter 3. 26 to 28. Listen to this one. For you are all sons of God. Say amen. If you truly ask Jesus, I don't care if it was a long time ago and you've gone away and you've come back. You didn't lose Jesus. You just went away. Now you're smart enough, you came back. Now open up your heart like God developed the walk. Listen. For you are all sons of God through faith in Jesus Christ. For as many as have you were baptized into Christ. Let's not talk about water. Let's talk about being born again. We're going to show you what water does here in a minute. For you all are sons. As many as were baptized into Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There we go again. There's neither slave nor free. There's neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. So you want equality? God makes, in God's eyes, we're all equal. Can you say amen? Being born again is being baptized into Christ. You're absorbed into him by the Spirit of God. This is what qualifies us to go to heaven. Two, when we accept Christ, the Holy Spirit puts us into the body, and he makes us either an eye or a foot, you know. And then thirdly, now in Christ, there's neither skin color. Say skin color. You're hearing a lot of people say, this life matters and this life matters. According to God, all of us matter. There's no difference. What Satan does... It gets us in these critical race arguments. Critical race theory comes from communist Mao Zedong. The word woke comes from the communist manifesto in Mao's communist plaza. And he declared the word woke. And we're speaking all this because our children are ignorant. They don't know our histories. 
And listen, we're walking with Jesus, but folks, don't ignore some of that stuff. Get those professors out of, the, out of those colleges. They're communists. Get those people that are teaching your kids about this transgender crud. That's a perversion. It is not of God. It's what Satan wants us to accept. Why? He says, as the days of Noah, so shall it be the days when I come again. Sodom and Gomorrah. So don't look to the world. It's falling apart. But you can't be a lukewarm Christian and not want to be fired up in this time and hour that we live. Are you with me? So, let's do a little illustration with you. Can I step down here? I done fired myself up. All right. Now, it's a simple illustration, kind of like the envelopes. All right, this is God. I know, doesn't look like him, does it? <laughs> All this beautiful water in here. Jesus said, he that comes to me, he shall come, well springs of water springing up to everlasting life. God, amen? This is you. You're a shot glass. A hot shot, that's what they used to call me. Anyway, so who cares about the past? Now, notice there's a lid on it. Let me explain. This represents a human being, a human person, okay? They're capped off from God. They got a lid on it. Don't know they're capped off. So no matter what I do, God's not going to get in them. And yet the Bible says, there's nothing in there, that's good. The Bible says that at the day of Pentecost, the Spirit filled the atmosphere of your breath. So the person that is, doesn't have Jesus in their heart still has the Spirit of God all around them, just like this illustration of the water. But it never gets in their life because they don't surrender and pop off their prideful lid and say, God, I'm sorry. Please help me, because I can't do it on my own. And God says, okay. And so you say, Jesus, come into my heart. And he begins to fill you up. Ah, now you got God in you, and you notice that it had air in there before. The air represented, when I changed it from the water, represented the fallen nature of Adam. Completely empty. You see, people's lives are empty, even Christian lives when they don't walk with God. God's left me. The heavens feel like brass feelings. But then you say, Jesus, come into my heart. And the Bible says, be not drunk with wine where excess, but be as filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms. In other words, God filled you with his presence. So now here you are filled with God. You're born again by one spirit. We are all baptized into one body, right? So here's the neat thing. We have God living in us. When we get baptized in water, when we get baptized in the spirit, when we accept Jesus, just pretend that I'm the Holy Spirit. I drop this full glass of you into God. Not only are you filled, but you're surrounded. Now, I want you to stop and think about that for a minute. Why do we give the devil so much glory? You're enveloped in God. You're totally swallowed up in God. Remember I gave the illustration? How many's ever had an aquarium at one time? I got rid of mine. I had this huge aquarium in my old, old office. If it ever exploded, I'd have to get a boat. But I know the fishes are swimming in there. They got their atmosphere. They're swimming around, folks. That little water that you see is just like the air you breathe. You're walking. You're moving. You're talking. You're laughing. You're crying. All in God. And it's the ones with the lid on. They can't get God into the heart. 
Well, you have not because you asked not. You say, Lord, please show me. All I did when I first got saved is I said, God, I just want to know you're real. I don't want to accept you right now, but I want to know you're real. And you know what he did? Look. All right, so he fills you. And then he drops you in himself. Now, tell me how the devil's going to get through God to pull you out of there. He can't. What happens, though, because you have a human will, he reasons with your head, tries to get you from the heart to the head, and says, yeah, but and you don't, you're missing this, and if God was doing this, and did, 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 next thing you know, you jerk yourself out of God, starting to walk around empty again. Good illustration? Okay, all right. So when you guys think, when you get up in the morning, you're not trying to have to earn God. You're in God. You're not trying to be somebody. You are somebody. Amen. Discover who you are and let God bring you to fruition. All right, let's get into the other baptisms. Gee, my hands are wet. Anyway, so... <laughs> Does that, does that bless you? All right. So let's move right on to the baptism of water. You saw the water. The re, all those illustrations are exactly what happens when we baptize you in water. What do you mean, Pastor Kerry? This happened when you accepted Jesus Christ. Baptism water is an outward testimonial to those watching. What happened to your heart? and life when you made Jesus your Lord. So you're going through an outward display, quite like communion, to show your testimony unto God and unto others. Love God and love others, right? And so we baptize. So here, let me explain. I'll come back down here. You already have God in you, okay? So now we're going to baptize you. You're going to declare... And, and pronounce Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior again through baptism. So we have a class. You come from the world. So you walk towards the water. You're leaving the world. And you're going to be entering into God. So those that are baptized need to recognize that when they walk towards the water to be baptized, they're walking out of the world and into God. Can you say amen? And then when they're in the water and all, they're getting ready, they need to confess that they belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. And if there's anything they want to renounce, I've seen people delivered of smoking and all kinds of things that they, you know, they want to renounce. Go ahead and do it. And then we baptize you. So you're ready to be baptized? Put one hand over your nose, one over your chest. We're going to have to get you under the water. And if you're on me, I'm going to hold you under there. No. <laughs> so you have God in you, but now you're marching from the world as a type and shadow. You're marching towards God. We're standing there in the water. So you're ready to be baptized? Yes, I confess Jesus is my Lord and Savior. I renounce the world. I proclaim God. And Lord, help me to live all the days of my life. We baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, in Jesus' name, we baptize you. And then stay just a, a moment or two, because the water is going to be fine. And you come out of that water dripping and soaking. And that dripping and soaking, God hits you with the anointing and rises up on the inside of you, literally. And you just sit there long enough. Don't be quick to get out of the water. You just sit there, let the Spirit of God permeate you. And then you come out of the water and you walk back into the world. The Bible says come out from among them, submerge yourself into God and then go into all the world and preach the gospel. You understand? Amen. All right. So water baptism is phenomenal. In fact, the people that are baptized because I learned from my my pastor, people literally got healed and stuff. So don't turn it into some old church ritual baptism. It's supposed to be a God-shaking thing. All right, let's move on.
Um, in, in Acts chapter 8, we're going to just read about water baptism just for a minute. Two scriptures, Acts 8 and Acts 10. 8.38 says this. I'm still ahead of schedule pretty much, am I? Yeah, man, good. So I don't see anybody turning red or kind of coming under. All right, so Acts chapter 8. This is the story of Philip the Evangelist. Remember in Acts? I really recommend you read the book. After you read John, really get to know Jesus. Go to the book of Acts and see what Jesus does to the believer. Okay? Now, this is the story of Philip the Evangelist. Philip just got through preaching. A whole bunch of people got saved. And the Spirit of God led him. And he saw this guy, this eunuch of Candace, Queen of Ethiopia. And he's reading from the Bible. See, so they came on a yearly basis to meet with the Jews to find God. And so he was there reading about Old Testament, about who Jesus was, but he didn't understand. Remember, Satan blinds the mind. So Philip ran right to the chariot and says, do you understand what you're reading? And he says, uh, no, unless somebody explains it to me. And I'm just trying to make a long story short. And then all of a sudden he leads him to the Lord and talks about Christ, leads him to Jesus. Then they go a little further and they see some water and the eunuch says, is there anything stopping me from being baptized in water? So let me read it to you. All right, verse 38. So he commanded the chariot to stand still and both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and baptized him. Now when they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord caught Philip away. He was translated so that he... The eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. Now, you don't realize that this eunuch is what brought revival to Africa. This eunuch was second in command, like Joseph was, to Pharaoh. And he's going to bring Jesus to Candace, the queen of Ethiopia, and a huge revival is going to break loose. And if you ever get a chance, and those of you coming in, you go to the Ethiopian church that's hewn out a straight rock, and there you see the work of angels in that church for those people in Africa, in Ethiopia. It looks like a cross. Now, just like this, and the church is down in the rock. So it, the angels took at it right on surface and burled it all in and hauled it all out. I don't know how they did it. But it sits there for all eternity to witness. You can go online and you can look at it. It will literally give you shivers that God did such a thing for his people. Are you learning anything? Hope I'm not boring you. All right, so Acts chapter 10 now. Now you know how the word gets out. God keeps on sending people out. Can you say amen? In Acts chapter 10, listen to verse 46. 48 it says then Peter answered can anyone forbid water this is chapter 10 verse 46 can anyone forbid water that these should not be baptized who have received the Holy Spirit since you believed and he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord and they asked him to stay a few days you, you read the book of Acts in chapter 16 remember when Paul and Silas were in the jail I could hear Silas, Silas saying to Paul, they were, in, in, they were in stocks. Do you know what a stock is? Where they put the stock on you and you got your head through the hole there. Long stocks and they had short stocks. I could just see Paul and Silas. And I could just see Silas looking at Paul and goes, here's another fine mess you got me into. <laughs> well, if you read the account... They went to praising God instead of complaining. They went to loving God in a big, huge earthquake, and God set them free. Say amen. And then the jailer knew that if the prisoners get free, he's going to be put to death, and his family is going to be put to death because he let the prisoner out. That's the way Roman worked. So he goes, oh, man, I'm going to die now. Paul and Silas are out of here. And Paul and Silas says, don't fret. We're all here. And end up, he gets saved and his family, and he, Paul baptizes them. Can you say amen? Paul very seldom baptized, though. Many of his disciples did the baptizing. But once in a while, Paul would baptize. Okay, are you with me? 
So we got the water down. We got the baptism into, what's the one you need to get bor born again? Baptized into Christ. Second one, baptized in water. And then the third one we're going to start right now, baptism in the Holy Spirit. So what does the word baptism mean? Immersed. All right. Here we go to our illustration again. The Bible says that when we receive Jesus, there's a wellspring in us. We're connected to heaven. Then we get baptized in water or whatever, we're baptized in the spirit. But you see, when we're baptized in the spirit, what God does is he con conditions us for ministry. So we're, we got God, we're in the body of Christ, but we need that excess amount of power. So God says, seek me and I'll keep dropping you in the power. You seek me, I'll drop you into the power. You seek me and I'll drop the power all over you. But if you don't ask, you won't receive. You have not because you ask not. So a spirit-filled person is a one who stays in the fountain. And every time they feel a charge or a taxation on their batteries, everyone take a look one more time up here. I know, get tired of looking at it. Every time you receive a challenge that comes your way, you lose a little bit. And you had an argument with your mom. There goes a little bit more. <laughs> and you're fighting with politics, and there goes a little bit more. See? So you constantly get filled. Constantly keep refreshed. Every morning. Every morning. You just keep if there's any little polywogs that get in there. Wash them out. That doesn't take much effort, does it? Why is it the devil sells us on, oh, we were going to rip in. We really got to mean it. Have you heard this one? I, I know you're really just sorry for what you did because you got caught. Don't ever say that to somebody because you'll get caught next. <laughs> Just keep on soaking. Can you say amen? Of course, you're a little bit more lady and, and gentleman-like than, you know, all of that. All right. So, spirit-filled. Say, I am spirit-filled, but I do not top off like I should. You need to top off. You got a little popper that needs to top off. You get filled with the Spirit, and if you keep on getting filled with the Spirit, it'll come right up to your lips, and you got a release valve right there. Satan poisons your mouth. Now God wants to re-anoint your mouth with his language. And so you can, my mom received hers. i tell you about my mom real quick. My mom was a Methodist, grandma, and she was one of the ones that was a, Last minute, I have to check it out. She finally got saved, but she didn't want any of that spirit-filled nonsense. That speaking in some kind of weird, whacked out language. That's just what the devil wants you to think. Don't touch that, because the Bible says you build up your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, but Satan says, don't do it. Please don't do it. And my mom. So God gives her a dream. My mom, you got to know. My mom's at sleep at night. My sister, in her dream, she's praying for my sister. And she's laying hands on Jackie, my sister. And she's praying, and out of her mouth comes tongues. In her dream. And God wakes my dad up and wakes her up at the same time she hears herself speaking. Now, if you don't see the humor in that, holy smoke, that, that is something else. Oh, my dad just got it right away. When I got born again, accepted Jesus, I just got mine right away. So the fallacy is that you really have to seek God and you really got to remember who does that. God does something simple. Open your heart and I'll pour you out. You know, drink into my spirit. 
I mean, we talked about the two brains. How's yours doing since then? <laughs> All right, finishing up. So we baptize, the third one is baptize in the spirit and power. Christian church needs to have power. Can you say amen? Because people are beginning to leave the church and looking for the supernatural other ways than through Christ. God put a blood protection on us so that the paranormal things, the demons, the whatevers, don't come into our zone. Can you say amen? Unless we invite them in. Ouija boards, tarot cards, the horror scoop. Hello. I mean, I should just tell you right there. You're a dummy if you read it, horror scope. You know? Well, we all want to know the future. Go to God. He says, I'll give it. I'll show you it. I don't want the future where the devil says. I don't want the lies what the enemy says and those that listen to him. They're crazy. I want to hear from my father. I want to walk with my Jesus. I want the Holy Spirit to teach me and guide me into all truths. Bring to revelation and understanding to me the things I need to know of. In order for that to happen, I've got to deny myself all the pleasures of self-life. No, just got to deny yourself enough to realize God really loves you. And you've been sucking on that self lollipop for a long time and you found out it's tequila with a when those little bugs in it it's not anything refreshing at all God is the only thing all right so all right baptized into the spirit and power Matthew chapter 3 verses 11 and 12 says this I indeed this is John the Baptist talking I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance but he, Jesus, who is coming after me, is mightier than I, whose sandals I'm not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Now, I, I believe, I probably asked this question so many times. What is the fire there, Pastor Kerry? The fire isn't anything negative. The Bible says in Hebrews that our God is a consuming fire. Hello. So when you accept Jesus Christ, not only you got all this water stuff, you got a fire burning in your spirit. Can you say amen? And he, Jesus, will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Now, isn't it amazing? When you got saved, the Holy Spirit baptized you into Jesus. But when you get spirit-filled, Jesus takes you and puts you into the Holy Spirit. Called a mystery of godliness. You got saved, Holy Spirit puts you into Jesus. You get spirit filled, Jesus takes you, puts you into the Holy Spirit. Did I say that wrong? Jesus puts you in the Spirit, and the Spirit puts you into Jesus. Okay, make sure I got that right. All right, there's a lot of information, almost done. All right, so. Jesus will baptize us with the Holy Spirit and fire. So say, I have a fire in my belly. Its job is to get rid of my chaff and to help my life be so unclumsy. You ever felt clumsy? You ever said something you wish you didn't? You could gather it in. Moving right along. Acts chapter 1, verses 4 and 5 tells us about the baptism. And being assembled together with them, Jesus commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You have heard from me, for John truly baptized you with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Can you say amen? And then in Acts chapter 2, the fulfillment of that, Verse 1 through 4 says, And when the day of Pentecost, 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, had fully come, the 50th day, they were all in one accord, must have been a Honda, okay, in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven of a rushing mighty wind that filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared on them divided tongues as a fire, 
What's the fire for? To burn up the waste in your life. Now, that's why a lot of people stop walking with God and choose religion because they don't want that fire to burn up something maybe they're holding on to they shouldn't. So you don't have to quit everything. You just follow Jesus and he will burn it up. And only things that are right will remain and good for you will remain. Can you say amen? God always gives you the freedom of choice. So you can enjoy God and enjoy your life without being polluted or poisoned. Can you say amen? And then it says, and there appeared on them divided tongues as of fire, and it sat on each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Being born again, the Holy Spirit puts you into Christ. Being Spirit-filled, the Spirit, uh, excuse me, Christ puts you into the Holy Spirit and then puts fire in you. It all happens at once. Two, the spirit baptism is God filling and soaking you as often as you come before him. Hello. How many has ever needed a shower? I mean, you're working in the yard, you're hot, you're sweaty, and the shower is just talking to you. That's just treat it as God. Maybe you're weary. Maybe this morning was a little tough. And you go to God and it's such a refreshing, such a powerful thing. When you don't listen to the sack of rocks and the lies that the enemy sells. Remember Peter, James, and John? They went with Jesus up in the mount, right? And what happened to Jesus? He was transfigured, wasn't he? Linda, you'll like this. And, of course, Peter, James, and John, the inner core, Jesus goes to stone, and then he's transfigured. And, of course, Peter always wanted to give that good word. He says, oh, God, it's good that we be here. Let us build three tabernacles. One for Moses, one for Elijah, one for you, Jesus. Suddenly a big cloud overcame everything, and it all cleared and only Jesus was standing there, and God says, this is my son, pay attention to him. In other words, I gave you Jesus to focus on him, to look at him, to study him, because he's everything I am. I gave him to you so you would be without excuse. You could have see that I am willing to come to you and bind up your wounds and save you. Amen. That would be a foolish thing for us to keep the lid on. Or like some of us smart Christians, not so smart, they'll get a little bit of God, but they don't want any more God. So they'll just cap off. And yes, they got enough faith to go to heaven and a little bit of life in there, but they haven't got any faith for victory or live it for Jesus, they'll just hang out until the Lord comes. <laughs> Hello. Don't be like one of them. And finishing. Everyone say finishing. All right, so we've seen being baptized into Christ. How many know that's a miracle? We've seen being baptized in water. We're going to do that in a couple of weeks. And we're going to enjoy all the fullness thereof. And we've seen what it means to be baptized in the Spirit. Now, what does the devil have? Well, we have the name. We have the word. We have the blood. We have the covenant. We have God in us. We are in God. We're seated with God on the right hand of the Father. God the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit dwells in you and I, and he orders our step. What does the devil have? Just the ability to lie and cheat you of your victory that God gave you when you got born again. If you got something out of that this morning, would you give the Lord praise?